Hello, everyone, and welcome to Meow Mix, the Carolina Panthers podcast. My name is Steven. My name is Jerry. And we're here. Free agency starts Monday, and we made it. We did a podcast before free agency started. <laughs> we <laughs> like snuck we it in under would. the wire, guys. <laughs> we got it here. You might be listening to this Monday morning. You might be listening to this sometime after free agency started, and everything we're saying just is wrong. But yeah. Uh, we're going to do our best here. Uh, we're just going to talk about free agency and, and who we think the Panthers should go after. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll talk about some of our own free agents. We'll talk about some uh, free agents from other teams. And we'll do a little bit of uh, projections of how much the contracts might be, things like that. We're not going to go too in-depth on that because we are always wrong. But uh, we'll talk <laughs> about it. We'll have some fun. Um, Jerry, any... <clears throat> Any surprises from like the franchise tags and stuff? I mean, it did kind of kill the the free agent or uh, wide receiver market. I feel like a hundred percent it did. I mean, <laughs> Michael Pittman Jr. was a guy I was kind of eyeing. Like, oh, this could be a good difference maker that I don't think is getting tagged. Nope, he got tagged. T. Higgins, yeah. I thought was going to get tagged. Yeah, tagged. T. Higgins was was a guy that a lot of people uh, really liked, and and I was pretty high on. Um, not as high as maybe. Uh, some people that I see on Twitter, but I, yeah. I thought that he could come in and, and be a guy. Uh, Jerry Judy got traded today for a fifth and a sixth. That, I mean, that ugh. that seemed uh, pretty low considering during the season last year. I think they were talking like a first or a second was the starting point for him. Yeah, I mean, I would have loved to get bring in Judy for two fifths or something like that. This and next yeah. year's fifth that they would have done something like that. I feel like he still has that first round talent he's a good route runner you know he's he's still young still young i feel like that would have been a good move for this team because a you're not you're not banking on him being a number one right out of the gate right you're you get bring him in here to compete and everything else i mean he has familiarity i believe with uh bryce young so yeah why would you not like at least it, yeah it, it, for for that price i mean a fifth and a sixth if we i would have been happy to go to a fifth and a, two fifths right yeah. or a fifth a sixth and a seventh or something you know some just something to up them a little bit for a guy who even if he's a 600 yard receiver that's i think uh, if you get a 600 a uh, 6 a 600 yard receiver in the fifth round i think you're pretty happy with that right a hundred percent. That's what, <laughs> that's why I don't get, like, I get that he only has like one or two years left on his contract, but I mean, no one else on this team was coming close to that last year besides Thielen. So you yeah. pair him with Thielen and you get a speedster guy. Yeah. Um, you let It would have been go. a nice experiment. Uh, you know, I, I don't, again, I'm not saying that we, and I don't think you are either is saying that he's going to come in and be the guy, the number one no. guy. He's going to be our franchise guy. We're going to extend him for five years and he's going to be here forever. But to take a flyer on a guy like that for a couple of late round picks would have been nice. I, I don't I, know if, if Dan Morgan was even involved. But he in, should in have the, at least called on Judy. I think we yeah, had that mentioned earlier so. this season. Yeah. Or yeah, off season. I agreed. Uh, uh, I so mean, he's out. Uh, 700 yards last year, 50 something receptions. So. Yeah. Again, not a guy that's going to change your team, but for our team, would have been a very, very nice piece. Yeah. Very nice piece. And Cortland Sutton's still there. And, there, you know, rumors are he's available as well. So I like uh, Sutton, but I just, I think his price tag is going to be higher than Judy's. I think you're looking yeah. at a third or. Oh, I don't know about that. I, I could see maybe a fourth for him. Um, but again, I don't know. Maybe he goes for the same. I thought Judy would have gone for more than a fifth and a sixth. So I did too. Just for the potential, right? A guy By the way, his rookie contract. I, I I accidentally spelled his, uh, his name and Courtney Sutton came up instead of Cortland. Oh. Sutton. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, Courtney Sutton. I don't know <laughs> who that I, I is. Was, I but... was curious of what his contract was. <laughs> I'm sure she's very very nice. <laughs> What's her it's, contract? Yeah. Uh, well, it, it doesn't release it. <laughs> um. Yeah. I mean, Sutton has 700, 800 yards. I still wouldn't be. Hating that one. Uh, let's see what yeah. his contract is. See if he's out this year. Because 
It seems like the Broncos are just blowing everything up. Yeah, it does. He has two I, I years. think that was good. He has two years remaining. I mean, if we could get him for like a fourth and a fifth or something, like a fourth yeah. this year. What is year he making? Like 14, 15 million a year? Oh, crap. Yeah, he's making 17. Never mind. Yeah. But again, uh, two years left. You could extend him and drop that average down a bit. You know, he could count virtually nothing on the cap this year, probably if they if they did that. So who knows? But um, we're not really here to talk trades. We're going to talk free agency. Uh, and we will s probably start off. I guess, Jerry, we should start off here with the big position, right? I mean, Wide the Panthers. No, the <laughs> Panthers don't have a quarterback. I mean, <laughs> It, you know, we're going to have to get a quarterback here, come in, do some things. Uh, let's just look at, uh, let's look at Kirk Cousins here. Uh, certainly better than Andy Dalton. Um, <laughs> now, what do you think, Jerry? Uh, well, I think Qu Kirk Cousins, the only valued starter. Otherwise, we're uh -huh. looking at Baker Mayfield, and we've already tried that experiment. Yeah, yeah. And Jacoby Brissett, he's in there, you know. Uh, filler. Yeah, I kind of <laughs> dropped the joke after I already mentioned Bryce Young. Like earlier. Bryce Young's here. Bryce <laughs> Young's here. We're not going to go after a quarterback. Just kidding. Um, although, you know, Russell Wilson, he's out there. But, you know, so we have a, a, a text with some friends, right? Mm -hmm. and, or a, a, I guess a chat, you should say, because I'm not old. Um, and some people in our chat believe that Russell Wilson would not be a starting quarterback anymore. I think he will be. I think he's a bottom tier starter or at least get a compete starting. I could see like a name like Pittsburgh, maybe interested. I mean, in he's him. looking get at a... Pittsburgh right now. Yeah. That he's meeting I, with them. Is he? I didn't know that. I just yeah, was assuming yeah. that would be a good landing spot for Supposedly him. Supposedly they have mutual interest. I mean, maybe, Maybe the Commanders just as a two-year type of stopgap, mm -hmm. but I assume they're going to go quarterback and start their franchise over. I mean, look at who knows what's going to happen in Tampa now that Baker is a free agent. That could be another. Yeah. I mean, would you go Baker or would you go Russell Wilson? I mean, yeah. for a couple of I mean, years. Atlanta is a possibility if Atlanta. they don't get Cousins or Fields or whoever they're rumored to have next. Minnesota. Um, yeah, there's there are plenty of options and and even people high in the draft like New England who may draft a quarterback but might not want to start him right away, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I think there are plenty of options available for Russell Wilson. But again, we're not really talking quarterbacks here. Um let's let's go ahead and start with we're not going to really talk running backs either, I don't think. I could see the Panthers signing a running back just sort of a you know, but not a Saquon Barkley, Derrick Henry, Josh Jacobs, Pollard, not none of those, that tier of guy. Um, so I don't think we really need to spend too much time there. You know, we've got Sanders under contract, unfortunately, who's going to be here at least another year. We've got Chuba who's going to be here next year. I could see I, him signing a third guy maybe, but I don't think that, I, I don't know who that guy would be. I personally think that they, they will draft somebody more than yeah. they would sign a yeah i, I hope back. they do yeah i hope they draft somebody in the fourth or fifth round you know I, if i was a t if i was a gm of a team i would draft a running back every single year in the fourth or fifth round fourth every fifth, single even year. six even six. i don't care yeah i don't care who i have at running back i would draft a guy every single year in those rounds because you never know and usually most of those guys are at least decently spent, have decent yeah. speed and probably can help on, out on special teams too. And that's what yeah. those guys do anyways. Right. Could take yep. a hit, can lay some hints, but. Yeah. Let's talk wide receivers because that's the sexy thing. That's the, you know, the most glaring. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. <laughs> I wish I had a little background music for the, they're the sexy <laughs> position. Well, it's the most glaring spot, uh, you know, in terms of helping Bryce out, you know, outside of offensive line, but again, that's going to be kind of tough to talk about, but we'll, we will talk about Bryce, uh, offensive line as well, but wide receiver, you know, we talked about some of the top guys that got tagged, but there are some guys out there who are available and would definitely be an upgrade over what we have now. And let's just start out with the, the name that everybody's talking about Calvin Ridley, right? There's Calvin Ridley. 
I, drafted by the Falcons, got suspended for the gambling situation, came back last year with Jacksonville, had a nice season, um, a little bit of rust, you could tell, especially kind of early on, but uh, he had a, a, overall a pretty nice season. And I think next year we'll have a very good season wherever he ends up. I think his market value on spot rack is around 17 million a year. 18 and a half now. Okay. Because I, I think a lot of the signing or tags really mm. gave him a couple extra million dollars per year because of that. Yeah. Yeah. He's a guy that definitely benefited from that. But Jerry, what do you what do you think about Calvin Ridley? When we first started this looking at free agency, I really liked him. I liked him more than DJ Moore coming out of college. I was kind of sad that we picked uh not sad i w- i had them as 1a 1b it was really mm-hmm. whatever particular order they wanted i really like him to this day player wise but i don't know if the panthers could afford that type of contract that he's gonna request on the open market yeah but again if they sign him to a four or five year deal that you know first year or two would count very little against the cap and our cap really opens up, oh, I think, next up. year and in the year up after that. So I'm not saying that we can't afford anybody. Uh, I think we can afford anybody we want. We just, you know, it just has to be structured correctly. They have to get the deal done with Burns. I mean, the Burns thing kind of... that That's really prohibited. Yeah, it, it makes the cap look a lot worse than it really is. Um, but... I do think, you know, if, you, if you're if you looking at a Calvin Ridley or you're looking at a couple of the, these other younger guys that we're going to be talking about, sub-30 guys, then I think you're looking at more than a one- or two-year contract, right? I think you're looking at a three- or four- or five-year deal with especially a talent like Ridley who, you know, again, he came back from a suspension, of a year-long suspension, to have a 1,000 yards last year, eight touchdowns. Like, that's a great season. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, w- I would love Ridley, like I said, but I just, I mean, where are we sitting at? It says $13 million. Right now, we're sitting at $13 million under the cap. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, you got to restructure Taylor Bowden. you got to make some moves. Um, cut Ian Thomas to save that $2 million because he's cut Hayden Hurst for $2 million, so I don't know why. He- yeah, I forgot about I forgot the <laughs> At Dayton Hurst, because I was thinking earlier, I was like, well, we don't really need to talk about tight ends. I can't imagine they're going to bring in another tight end. But nope, yep, you're right. They, they definitely are going to have to. I, w- I would have kept Hurst and cut Ian Thomas, yeah. me personally. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, the, why do they, say, what is it they love about Ian Thomas? I don't understand it. I mean, he, I don't maybe, understand. May, maybe he's a, uh, I mean, they say he's a great blocker, but I mean, maybe he's a That's great blocker. That's what they say. Room. Guy. That's what they say. Have pictures Maybe he is. of uh, Tepper or, you know. Maybe, yeah, that could be. Go could to be. Tepper's key parties. I don't know. He's got the evidence from that Rock Hill thing that, that <laughs> makes Tepper, li- <laughs> Tepper liable for the whole thing. Yeah, uh, I don't know. But uh, again, I, yeah, I don't want to get too deep into like salary cap implications because I do think, you know, that I do think, number one, that they're going to get the Burns deal figured out and that's going to so. free up a lot of money. And I do think, you know, you sign these guys, you just backload their deal uh, from a salary cap perspective, and it's fine. So Ridley, for me, would be number one. Who would be number one for you in terms of wide receiver free uh, agents? Ridley. Ridley would okay. be my number one want list. I think he's still – I mean, he's 29 years old, but I still think he has that ability to be a good, solid number one. Maybe not top tier, but – Yeah. Yeah, top. What about What about Marquise Brown? Hollywood Brown. I never liked Marquise Brown. Um, he's 26 years old. He has speed, but he has issues ca- tracking the ball in the air. He's also not a good locker room guy. When he was in Baltimore, he kind of forced his way out. Um, kind mm. of bad mouth Lamar Jackson. I don't want that for Bryce. I don't want yeah. that for Bryce right now. I mean, that sounds like I'm babying him, but no. After last year, you don't want to get a malcontent receiver in here. Yeah. Well, he does have talent. He's got deep speed. He's, you know, he's one of those guys that can help out a team, but I think he's much better as a second or a even a third wide receiver than a number one. Yeah, I did too. Uh, whereas Calvin Ridley, I think, would certainly be, uh, has the ability to be a number one. 
And by the way, Kevin really not perfect either. Like we're oh, talking, no. we're he's, Kevin really's not. Suspended. He's not. Yeah, Kevin really not a tier one wide receiver in the no. league, right? Um, but a guy who on this team would be the number one. Uh, I mean, when you start looking down the list of wide receivers, it starts to get pretty bare bones after that. I and mean, you got Gabe Davis, who I, I wouldn't mind bringing in a Gabe Davis, who's twenty four yeah. years old, has speed. I, and this is also, this is free agency. So you can right. also double dip in the draft, which I think. And they should. Be. And, and, and they Darnell should. Moody, I wouldn't, 26 years old. He had a, you know, 900 year art season a couple of years ago. You know, yep. maybe he can get that back up. So, I mean. I like Kendrick Bourne. Uh, now he got mm-hmm. hurt middle of last year. He's a little older than some of these guys. He's 29. I guess he's the same age as Calvin Ridley. But he's a guy that, you know, he had 800 year, yards a couple of years ago with the Patriots. Um, and again, was having a pretty good season in uh, in New England before he got hurt last year. But I like him as long as he can come back. He might be a little cheaper g- given the injury concern. Um, but I was like, I liked him in San Francisco and I, you know, I liked him. Uh, I'd like to have him on the team. Uh, you got Tyler Boyd, who's the, that- kind of the third yeah, that's but, who I would go after if we're going towards that ranking. I, mm-hmm. You know, roughly eight million dollars a year or so for a couple of years. Uh, Twenty nine years old, a little bit old. Well, I guess Calvin Ridley age. You know, still has some time left. But thousand yard receipt year twenty twenty one nine hundred yards twenty twenty two twenty three eight hundred yards. He had a little fall off last year, but I think also with Jamar Chase and T Higgins there, it kind of gives him that little. Hey, I can slide in and I yeah. could hit people surprisingly because I was good, just not as good <laughs> as the other two that were there. Yeah. And the fall off last year, I mean, you know, they lost Joe Burrow pretty early in the season. Yeah. And I mean, that, uh, I don't know if he just, if he had um, a good connection with, was it Browning? I don't remember the, the guy's name who was Jacob Browning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I like Tyler Boyd. I, you know, another guy that I've kind of always uh, liked as a, second, third wide receiver. Again, these are guys, th- these guys we're talking about now are not going to come in and unseat Adam Thielen as the number one. But a guy like Tyler Boyd in the slot, it's a really nice weapon. Yeah, I mean, he he runs a 4-5, so he's not a burner, but I mean, he's he's a good, solid guy. Like, yeah, nothing good hands, wrong. Good That's receiver. something this team only had in Thielen was a good, solid guy. Mm-hmm. No one else was that for this team last year. Yeah, um, DJ Shark. He wasn't that yeah. last year. DJ Shark is available too. I mean, roughly six million a year. If you I mean, could do DJ Shark for you know four or five million dollars, again, I, I don't love the one year deals. I just I understand for a guy like DJ Shark where you you know give him a prove it deal, but if he proves it, he's gone, yeah. right? <laughs> like, and if he doesn't prove it, then I guess you know you don't have to worry about it. But um, that type of and again, we thought DJ Chart coming in was going to be a really good, a really good weapon. Yeah. We thought he was going to be the number one guy easily, with a Thielen being a nice high end number two, and that just didn't play out that way. So I don't know about giving Chark a second chance here, but I wouldn't hate it if they did if if the price was right. Yeah, uh, Josh Reynolds, twenty nine years old. I'm had a thousand yards last year with the Lions. I mean, another top end burner he is not yeah but another reliable weapon if you want to bring in another reliable weapon which i am all for to give bryce young a couple reliable weapons and then having a speedster or two i mean yeah what's his um market value or does pff has him at two years five and a half million per year which i would be all for sure i mean before that, he's had 400 yards receivings, you know, 600. So, I mean, his 28 years old was his first breakout season, but right. I mean, he was with the Lions. So, <laughs> I mean, we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about Odell Beckham Jr., Michael Thomas. You know, these guys are out there, but I don't know on this team, this kind of rebuilding team, if those are guys that are going to be happy here and, and personalities that you want on the team. I, I just don't, I would, I would say no to those guys. I would too. I, w- I wouldn't want to even bring them in because of that. Um, yeah. So I, I just checked Josh Reynolds on spot rack and 
they have him at seven million, and PFF has him at six and a half, so or five. Mm. So I feel like that's a very. I kind of like Josh Reynolds now a little bit more than the rest. Yeah. Um. You have, uh, you know, and then you have guys like Curtis Samuel, Marcus Valdez Scantling, Nicole Hardman, uh, like Paris Campbell, just some of these guys that can fit into an offense. But again, you're not going to be jumping for joy. I think that's probably the type of guy that's going to come in here. I, I just don't see them. I don't see them signing Calvin Ridley. I don't see them signing Hollywood Brown. I think it's going to be more of a, you're going to bring in a two or a three, you know, a low two, a high three, and then you're going to draft a guy. Yeah, I, 100%. I agree with that. Uh, yeah. Donovan Peoples-Jones is available. Um, I and like he's him. He's a really low on this yeah. ranking. I mean, he's 25 years old. He was with the Lions last year. So, I mean, there is that, you know, he only had a, not very much last year, so I mean, yeah. What would I hate bringing him in for four or five million dollars, kind of a two year prove it deal? Yeah, no. I mean, there's decent. I think the value in the lower tier is there for some of these yeah. younger guys. I just don't. I don't think you have to swing big because there's not that big guy out there now. Yeah, yeah. There's just no. There's no. Other than maybe Calvin Ridley, there's no like bar none number one, get thousand yard consistently guys. That, does um, anybody know what happened to Donovan Peoples Jones? Everybody has him listed as like two million dollars a year. Is he coming off a serious injury? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. So I think we're we're both pretty pretty on board with the Panthers likely going mid tier with wide receiver and then drafting and hoping that they hit in the draft. I could see them maybe drafting a guy at 33 and then possibly another one in the, you know, fourth or fifth round as Me well. Too. I could easily see that. Uh, that's I mean, a, that's just a position that we are. So we're so poor at right now. So poor. I mean, yeah. speaking <sighs> of tight end, <laughs> We're gonna say we're gonna save edge for a, uh, you know we're gonna do edge soon, but let's talk tight end real quick. Hunter Henry, I think, just got signed, and he was kind of the number one guy that was out there, uh, and that's that should tell you all you need to know, right? <laughs> he uh, was... Hunter Henry's a, a good guy. Dalton Schultz already, saw, I think, is re-signing yeah. with the um, Houston Texans. Hunter Henry, Noel Fant. I it really depends. I was shocked that they got rid of Hurst as quickly as I did considering he's had previous, you know, ability. Yeah. So I would be. Ish. Not I mean, he was, he was never like a no great receiving tight end, uh, but he was solid and I was he, shocked he was, that they went yeah. ahead and cut him. So it wouldn't shock me if they brought in somebody that they are already familiar with, like a Noah Fant from Seattle. Um, they have another guy from Seattle as well that I would not be shocked if they brought in. Just because it feels like they already had a guy in mind, in my opinion. Dis Disley, is that who you're talking about? Uh, Disley, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I that that actually makes a lot of sense. Either one of those guys. And in fact, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to predict that Noah Fant is a Carolina Panther. I'm going to predict uh, that. Because I think that makes a lot of sense. He's a guy who... He started off his career in Denver, right? Yeah. Yeah, he had a couple of 600-yard seasons in Denver. Um, Very consistent. You know, three or four touchdowns every single year. Uh, You know, Denver, he's 562, 673, 670 in his three years in Denver. And then... 26 years old. Yeah, young guy. I like that. I think that... I think that makes a lot of sense, actually. His market you know, value is six point two million a year. So basically, what we were paying, um, Hurst. Yeah. Um, I like that. That makes that makes sense to me. I, I wouldn't shock it. Johnny Smith, um, another guy that's down there that could be <clears throat> productive here. I mean, yeah. there. I feel like you don't need to go spend a lot of money. I do think Noah Fant would be probably the number one guy right now for us being younger, familiar with Canales. 
Um, yeah. Wouldn't shock me. Yeah, and again, Dan Morgan was there. Yeah. I think when they brought him in, so that that makes sense. Okay, let's uh, let's move on. Where you want to go next? Um, corner. I we need corner. We need, well, let's do guards. <laughs> we <because> need everything. <laughs> let's do guards. Um, we do have a time limit of nine minutes left on this call, so we may need to take a break to come back. Yeah, we'll definitely have to take a break because we're not going to get all these in nine minutes. Okay, so interior offensive lineman. Who are you I, looking so, at? So, because here's the big thing: is everything I'm reading from uh, Joe Person and Mike K from the Charlotte Observer and the athletic respectfully both in my opinion probably the best beat writers currently for the panthers um mm -hmm. so are saying that they're going to fill up that offensive line so i have a feeling they're going to go to more of a zone scheme than the power rush that those two are good at uh in the mm -hmm. sense that austin corbett and bradley bozeman i would not be shocked if they were eventually released i think uh, bozeman it's almost it's almost guaranteed that he yeah. will not be here yeah. So, with that I don't being know what the, said, the cap savings are for him to be cut, but it seems like he's on his way out. With that being said, we need to kind of keep an eye out for more of the less chunky guys. <laughs> I mm. think Christensen mm. can work a zone because he was being that tackle, being able to kick out and stuff. So, with that being said, I don't know. I mean, Damian Lewis is twenty six from Seattle, but he, I, I think he's a bigger guy. So, but he's yeah. a starter. Just looking, kind of looking at some of the top guys here. Robert Hunt is listed yeah. as a guy who's a, a good fit for his own blocking scheme. Um, my ignorance with offensive linemen and their, you know, and what they're good at <laughs> is going <laughs> to yeah. show here. But hey, uh, does it know, say I, tell you what they're good at? Where are you at? I'm just on the NFL NFL list, uh, NFL.com list, but. Yeah, it basically it says it says that he's a good zone blocking. Uh, it has some experience at tackle as well. So, a guy like that, a guy who has played tackle and has moved into guard, I feel like those guys are always better mm -hmm. as interior offensive linemen when they have the experience. They know kind of know what they're expected to do and what helps a tackle. Uh, so I like that idea. I don't, I, you know. Have you heard that they are going back to the zone? Is that what you... I have not heard it, but that was kind okay. of my reading of the tea leaves that they're looking at interior. Gotcha. Linemen. They've already said Icky staying at left tackle. So that would be my guess is what they were thinking. And and I guess I, I could be completely wrong, but I well, think that's Corbett fine if Bozeman they build is... the line that way. Yeah. Right. Like don't try to force a power blocking line into a zone block 100%. blocking scheme like they did last year. Uh, so if they're going to build the line that way, that's fine. But uh, right now, that's not what we have. So uh, I agree. I think uh, I think Bozeman's gone. Corbett, I like Corbett. I, if he doesn't fit the zone blocking scheme, I guess I could see him being cut as well. But he seems like one of the better guards in the league. So can't stay I mean, healthy. But But there's some quality, decent guys out there. I mean... I think this is where you get a lot of bang for your buck in free agency, the guards and mm -hmm. centers, because you can get a starting guard, young starting guards. And when I say young, 27, 26 is very young for a guard because they could play 32, mm -hmm. 33 if their knees sure. hold up. Um, like Robert Hunt is 28. Lloyd Cushman, Barry, 26 from Denver. Uh, Connor Williams is coming off an ACL tear, but he could be grab cheap. <clears throat> maybe come in and prove that he he's fine. I mean, that's obviously on your medical staff, but yeah, my concern and he's a center. So my concern with him would just be the same thing that we saw with Corbett, where Corbett was supposed to be ready by the mm -hmm. beginning of the year. And it was what, six, seven games into the year before he came back. So that would be a little concerning for me. However, he, he apparently, according again, according to this list, I'm looking at would be one of the higher tier guys had he not gotten hurt so i don't mind buying low on a guy with talent especially you know acls are no longer career enders no so i i wouldn't mind i wouldn't mind that at all if the medical staff is confident he can come back fully 
But yeah, I mean, we could tell you guys a bunch of names here, but are you going to know who they are? We don't know who they are. Greg so. Van Roten. There we go. <laughs> He's yeah, still so we in know the that league. name. <laughs> Greg Van Roten, 34 years old. There we go. I there did not go. realize he was still in the league. Well, he's a free agent, so he might not be soon. Trey Turner. Trey Turner's out there as well. Trey Turner's still in the league? Holy crud. Yeah. He's only 30 years old. What? Yeah. Yeah, he's 30. He's I... almost 30. He's, he'll be 31 by the time the season starts, but. I Yeah, I thought he retired already. Not retired. Uh, okay. Well, I don't think we need to talk about tackles. I feel no. like we've got our tackles, you know, I, will they sign backups? Will they maybe draft a guy possibly, but we're not going to, we're not going to waste time talking about a bunch of tackles. Do you want to go? Let's see. Let's go corner real quick. Just because the corner list really isn't that great either. Uh, I mean, it, it kind of starts with Kendall Fuller, Stefan Gilmore, like those, Stefan Gilmore, we like. I don't think he would want to come here. No, he. I, I would assume he wants to chase a ring, rightfully so. That's not a knock on him. Um, yeah. Awuzie, Chudawa, uh, I mean, he's always been one of the better corners that just never seems to be loved. Um, Steven Nelson, Kenny Moore. I mean, I none of these guys really jump out at me that they need to sign. I mean... Do you just see maybe about going back to Dante Jackson and see if you could sign him for cheaper or I cut him and then re-sign him for mm -hmm. a much cheaper deal? I don't I would you want to do that if you were Dante Jackson? Would you come back to the team that that cut you? I mean, what else do you have? I mean, I, I mean that's what I'm saying. Like I, I you know, maybe they shouldn't even cut him. I mean, they cut like what, ten million dollars in cap space with him. So yeah. Yeah. Sound too. Yeah. I, I don't know, man. It's um it's tough. You got JC Jackson who played ten games last year, just five games the year before. Not very uh healthy, it seems. CJ Henderson is gonna be out there. You could re sign him potentially. Uh Aduka, Adoka, Jeff Adoka is out there. Do you uh, want Sean to take Mar a flyer on him? Sean Murphy bunting. I mean, I mean, there's, there's, I think you could get a number two, but at the same time, I don't think it's going to be a top tier number two. So I think we're going to be sitting at the about the same position we were at last year <laughs> that when you once, once JC Horn gets injured, yeah, we're, we're going to struggle in that net. And who knows? Maybe he stays healthy, or maybe, you know, uh, why can I not think of our defense coordinator's name? Uh, maybe he has Everett. something up his hip in his plan, but. Yeah, Evero. Evero. Uh, this is the thing. Like, when you start looking at this team, and this is why I say they need to blow it up and start all over. Look at wide receiver. You've got Adam Thielen as your number one. And then what? Nothing. Right? Yeah, you have Mingo that you're hoping to pan out. You have hope. You have maybe some potential, but you don't have anything proven. Mm -hmm. Cornerback, you've got J.C. Horn, who's hurt all the time. And then what? Nothing. Edge, you've got Brian Burns. And then what? Nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right? Like corner or uh, safety. Xavier, Xavier Woods, Woods and... Uh... And, and uh, all, you know, your offensive line is... You've got Moten. You've got Icky. What is he? You we got don't really Christian know. Barry at Brady Christensen at, at left guard. That's a question. I, I, everything's a question. Everything on this entire team outside of three or four guys is, is just. And we will take a quick break as we just got shut off. Sorry about that. Lost track of time. <laughs> 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 Jerry gave me the warning and I completely ignored him. So sorry about that, Jerry. <laughs> I, uh, I, I, I anyway. kind of got into that rant too. I was like, yeah, let's do this. Yeah. But I mean, it's, it's, it's wild because these guys that are not your burnt, your burned, your horn, 
your Moten. They could just be any guy on any other team, honestly. They're just I, not special. I think there's no Moten special on in, this team. In his role is special, but at a certain point, yes, you're a hundred percent right. They're not they're not the uh top tier guys. They yeah, had the lack of talent of on this team is just astonishing. When you when you start to look at it, I I don't know. This is good. This is a multiple year rebuild, and you have to do it. There is no other option at this point. You this, there's no reloading because you don't have anything to reload. This this is a eat your vegetables type of season where yeah. we're gonna have to take our lumps. We're gonna have to go mid to low tier signings. We're we're gonna hopefully build our quarterback up a little bit i think that's the number one goal which it should be this year is just protecting Mm -hmm. bryce getting him better getting him more comfortable and then we can work on other things i know it's kind of gonna hurt our defense with evero but we've got to take our vegetables we can't be signing all these top tier free agents and drafting top tier defensive guys because quite simply we can't afford it we don't have the draft capital this is a vegetable year, guys. This is it's gonna be a tough year. And you know, I hate I hate saying it, and I know a lot of you guys out there hate hearing it, and you think, ah, no, we're just a couple of players away. No, we are not. We are not a couple of players away. We are 15 players away. Like we're 30 players away. <laughs> we're a lot of players away. And most of the guys that have been on this team for the last couple of years will not be on this team over the next couple of years. It's just, that's just, it, it's going to be a big turnover and it should be because this has been a bad team for a long time. Yeah. And I you mean, had, you know, you had Wilkes who came in and got the most out of what was here. But again, even a lot of those guys aren't here anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, you're going to have to kind of rebuild it step by step. So this year, they're going to focus on maybe one or two positions to try and get better at. And then next year, they're going to focus at a couple of more. And then maybe the year after that, you start thinking about competing in the division. But I think we're two years away, at least, from even considering being not a top five draft pick team. Uh, I will say this, that next year... As it stands right now, obviously things are going to change. They are currently sitting at $145 million under the cap. Yeah. So this is, like I said, a vegetable time where you got to make those cuts. You got to take that dead cap this year. You got to take those lumps. You just have to really kind of build it. If you do want to sign a big name guy or a better guard and stuff like that, like the Robert Hunt, who's probably one of the best guards in the free agency, Mm -hmm. You're going to have to give him a nice four or five year deal, push that salary out till the end where you have more space. That's why I, I'm shocked that Brian Burns contract was not done because he's counting $24 million against cap this year. That seems gotta, like. Yeah. You got to figure out what to do with him. If you're going to keep him, pay him. Yeah. If you're going to keep him, pay him. He had, you know, he's, he costs what he costs. You're the Panthers. You're not winning anytime soon. You're going to have to pay a premium for guys that are of his caliber. Yeah. And even if we don't think he's, you know, a top five edge in the league, he is a top 10 edge in the league. And you're going to have to pay him like, unfortunately, like a top five edge in the league because you're the Panthers and you're not winning anytime soon. So, yeah, you're going to have to pay him that tax. Yeah. And not only that, he's been a good loyal guy here too. He hasn't, Miss games. He hasn't been a like this kind of all started with you turning down a trade for him. You made him yeah. a top tier. Yes, we I we all agree that trade should have happened, but yeah, you made that decision. Now you got right. you have to take it. You have to move on from that and go with what he's sitting at now. You have to pay him because because the time to trade him is past. Yep. He is no longer as valuable as he was because of the contract that he was on. The time to trade him is past. Take your 
Yeah, like you said, eat your vegetables, pay him his money, try not to pay him $30 million a year, but 27, 28, give him a good guarantee, manipulate that cap in such a way to where it's not going to hurt us for the next couple of years and rebuild your team. And let's talk about Edge because after him, this is why he's so valuable. Yes. Because after him, there is nothing. There's no one, absolutely no one currently on this team. I mean, it, we, we j not joke, but we, we we're talking about, uh, God, man, my brain is not working. Uh, the Penn State guy, Etor. Yeah. yeah, Etor was having a good year, got injured and everything, but he's a free agent. I wouldn't mind yep. bringing him back, but... But what did he have, like four sacks? Yeah. And we were thrilled about that? <laughs> well, it was also his run defense. I, w I wasn't seeing sure, more splash sure. plays. But and we I'd need a, we need a, a, a pass rusher I opposite agree. Burns. I agree. Because I that hurts Burns, not having that. And there are a few out here that I really like. I mean, number one, a guy you're not going to be able to afford, Daniil Hunter, who had 16 and a half sacks last year. So let's just move on from him <laughs> because uh, uh, we're not going to be able to sign him. You, you never know. Yeah, we can't sign him. <laughs> you can't sign him and Burns, right? And I'm assuming they're going to assign Burns. They went ahead and, and franchise tagged him. Uh, well, but he's, he's on guy, this team. I mean, yeah. I mean, Daniil Hunter's got a, a you know market value on spot rack of twenty million a year, and I think Burns is it's like twenty two on spot rack. So I mean, that's that's the type of guy you're looking at. A guy I do like, Jonathan Greenard. So finished sixth among edge rushers in win rate, pass rush win weight last year, had 12 and a half sacks. Put that guy opposite Brian Burns. And by the way, his market value on, on spot rack is like 13 and a half million. I'm assuming on this team, it would probably have to be more like 15. But... That's the type of guy who would make Brian Burns special again, I think. I mean, what about a Chase Young? A 24-year-old guy. Um, yeah. He hasn't, he hasn't really shown up yet, but he still has all that talent. I mean, Spot Rack has him market value at 13. I'm assuming it's probably going to be a little bit higher just because he is so young and had that. And he's ability. got the name value, yeah. right? But he's just always a guy who, I mean... Him and I, I look at him and like Jadavion Clowney as very similar type of guy. They're going to show up some days. They're going to have great games, but you can't count on them consistently. No, huh? I, I don't know that those guys. It's hard to say. It's hard to say because, <laughs> you know, if you if you have to pay somebody $15 million a year, to come in here, do you want to pay that to Chase Young? Do you want to pay that to Davion Clowney? Knowing what you're going to get? I mean, Chase Young's 25 years old. Does he have that in him? Does he have the dog in him where he can turn it on? He, he didn't do it on the 49ers, really. I mean, that 49ers team is completely stacked, though, where everyone could get to the quarterback. Yeah, I know, but... Uh, give me a second. Let me try to look up his uh, PFF grade. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, he was a guy I, I kind of wanted to talk about with you. If you look, just kind of looking at his stats here, seven and a half sacks, his rookie season with the commanders. Since then, one and a half sacks, zero sacks, five sacks, two and a half sacks. Actually, I guess last year he had seven and a half total. So, a lot of injury concerns with him. Yeah. I, played 15, 15 games this rookie year. Since then, he has not played more than nine. I mean, would well, he again, not I guess be, last year he played most of the games. Would he not be a good guy to bring in here and approve it deal? Sure, sure. But again, I if don't you're rebuilding, are you bringing in prove it guys? If you're rebuilding, you're bringing in one-year guys? I wouldn't prove it doesn't necessarily mean one year. I think you could sign a guy to a three year prove it deal where, you know, after one or two years, you can let him go. But uh, sure. I mean, if you're going to sign him to three or four year deal with, you know, 
uh, out manipulated after- in such a way to where you could get out after a year or two. Fine. Uh, I, you know, would I be excited if Chase Young was brought in here? Sure. I, Cause of you course, need, I you, think I would back to what we are discussing. We need somebody on that opposite side that other offenses have to recognize. I mean, yeah. Etor, as much as we said, he improved. He goes on that opposite side. No one flinched. No one's like, yeah. okay, we got to watch out for Etor. It was like, Brian Birds is over there. <laughs> That's right. all that yeah. they said. Oh, man. I, you know, you've got a guy from the Jets, Brian Huff, uh, or Bryce Huff, excuse me, who's listed as one of the top 10 guys. Um, Marcus Davenport, Shaq Barrett, who you know 31 years old he's fallen off a bit from his high but a guy we know a lot from the nfc south yeah i was gonna say was he with uh evero in denver but then i realized no he was in tampa yeah. at that time yeah he's been in tampa he's been a, a absolutely nemesis to the panthers always played well against the panthers who did it but again he's getting up there in age i don't know that he moves the needle a ton now is he better than ygm sure but, you know, I don't know. I, I And by the way, I think he was with the Broncos at one time, but not while ever it was there. Yeah, I, I uh, still say you try to go after Chase Young. He had 10 sacks last year, it says. I mean, yeah. I, like I said, I think that would be a nice little... If you're going to spend big money, like getting a book in with Brian Burns would be nice. Sure. Sure. Uh, seven and a half sacks last year. So I don't, I don't know where you're seeing 10 from, but PFF has him at 10. So that may include the playoffs. Ah, maybe, maybe. Okay. Well, either way, there are some, you know, edge is one of those positions where there actually are some guys, some, some you know, game changer type talent out yeah. there. So if you're going to spend big money, just from what we've looked at so far, if you're going to spend big money on a position, I would go edge, I think, just based on the talent that's there. Because yeah. you're going to pay big money for a wide receiver who might not be worth what you're going to have to pay due to the lack of available options. Yeah. I mean, I would, I receiver, I'd go like the uh, mid tier, um, maybe the Tyler Boy, the Josh Reynolds type mm-hmm. of route. Yeah. Um, and then, like, I, I would om- I hate saying this because I also think that the line is actually where I would spend more. If I had to put positions for free agency, I would go line, then edge. Yeah, both yeah. lines. Yeah. Offensive and, line, then defensive line. Yeah. Because I think you could build that up. I don't think receivers where you're going to get a great starter. I think you could get a good piece. And tight end, I think you could get a good piece. I think Noah Fant might be a starter level, but it depends if you want to pay that money for him because I think he's going to get the most for a tight end this offseason. Let's talk linebacker real quick because we've got Frankie Luvu, and Frankie Luvu is listed. Yeah, he's he's listed as the number one linebacker according to NFL.com. And I agree. I, I think... He, if I was honestly looking at the guys, the the free agents on this team, obviously he's number one now that Burns has been tagged of guys you want to re-sign. But Lufu, he's just a good player. He's just a solid football player who has earned a good contract, and he's earned it here, and he should have it here, in my opinion. I, I 100%. I think this is a signing that you need to do for your locker room. I think this is for the other guy because you have never heard anything negative from him. You never heard him do anything. All you heard was that guy came in. He was a spark plug his first year. He came in last year and this year and really kind of showed out. You re-signed that guy. He came in as a special teamer. He proved that he belonged on the starting as a starter defenser. And you need to you need to pay that guy for the rest of the league to see, hey, if I go there for a prove it deal and I prove it. They're willing to bring me in. Yeah. He's just, he was a diamond in the rough and 
He's a great locker room guy. Well, I think you may have mentioned that. He's just, he's the type of guy, if you were building a team, just personality wise, work ethic wise, he's who you want around a young team. Yeah. And the Panthers are going to be a young team over the next couple of years. I, I think he does the right things. That's what that's. Yeah. He, he plays the right way. He, he he's hard nosed. He, he gets after the quarterback. I, I just don't. I don't understand why you would not sign him. He makes those splash yeah. plays in key downs. So, he's not an All Pro. No. Right. He's a borderline Pro Bowler. So you're not going to have to break the bank for him. But he's just a really good player, and I would love to have him back. So I hope he would be obviously at the number one spot on my rankings in terms of linebacker to come back. Uh, any of the other guys on this list jump out at you? linebacker if we sign frankie louvu no but other than that patrick queen i would i mean he's had his ups and downs um mm -hmm. i wouldn't mind bringing him in and they're like high level type of guy yeah um, boomer bust kind of kind of yeah guy. uh devin white's a free agent or is he gonna get re-signed by Fr uh I, I, he's a free agent right now I, see, I think Devin White might be a very interesting pick for this type of defense because he's a he's a faster guy, a little smaller than normal for a middle linebacker, but I think he might fit Evero's style of defense pretty well, being yeah. speedier and, you know. I mean, he's, so. he's just like a couple of years out from being an all-pro. Yeah. And he's 26, so bring him in to a team that might hold him more accountable maybe for some of the you know, freelance plays he likes to take. Uh, I would, I would love to, to take a, a, that's the kind of guy, again, if you're rebuilding your team, bring in someone who has high upside. And if he doesn't work out, you know, yeah, I mean, not a big deal. I, I don't get why you would not want, I mean, he was injured last year. So yeah. Yeah. I, I would, I would love to bring in Devin White. Obviously, I still think Frankie Louvu is my number one. I think you have to prove that to the oh, locker yeah. room guys. Yeah, that you know, you come here, you perform, you get you get paid, you get respected, and stuff like that. Yeah, and and guys like Bobby Wagner or Levante David, those guys aren't coming here. No, so they we shouldn't. Don't need to, we don't, I, don't, I, I don't want to not. Guys. I don't want to be mean. They're not coming here. That's fine. Yeah, I get it. They're not. They don't need here. to. Yeah. They're going to go to the Jets. They're going to go to wherever they think they have a chance to win a title. Yep. And you look like somebody like Willie Gay from the Chiefs, who is just a really solid depth player uh, on this team, would probably be a starter, but it's not going to break the bank. I like I, I like a guy like that. Um, yeah. I mean, they're, again, this is another another group of guys that – you don't have the super high end talent, but you've got the Frankie Louvu who you can just re-sign. He's already here. You just re-sign him. And then maybe uh, you get a depth piece or two. And what is Frankie Louvu? 28? You could sign him to a four or five year deal and Yeah, know, I'm take that. very happy about signing him to a longer deal. Like yeah. I said, I th I know I, I keep reiterating this, but it helps bring other free agents in here of the Devin mm -hmm. ones, of that lower mid-tier of hey i could go there i could perform and get another contract with them because they're not just chewing me up and spitting me out you keep saying that I, you know i don't know if that is the case but maybe it is maybe it is i mean <laughs> i don't know if it works that way i think the nfl is just a, who's gonna pay me the most money until you get to that upper echelon and then it's where can i win and who's gonna pay me the most money so, you know, again, it's maybe I'm being a bit jaded when it and comes to that. But. I may be wrong, but I just <clears throat> I feel like there is that type of talking within a locker room and through yeah. agents of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it certainly doesn't hurt. No. Right. It doesn't but hurt. Either way, you're... he's still, in my opinion, one of the top players on that defense last year. And I, I think Evero should want him back and we should bring him back yeah yeah i mean the the key to 
bringing in good talent is to be a good team is to win. Right. I mean, you saw like the Patriots, they were never loyal to anybody. Never loyal. <laughs> they, they cut guys left and right. They had to cut Tom Brady. If he wanted too much money, honestly, they had to trade him. They had gotten rid of him. And they had, t- and there were years and years where the rumors were that they were going to get rid of him. Right. And then he would always take less money and be the consummate team guy. But so that's, you know, if you want to win, you have to win. (laughs) So this team is just going to have, you're going to have to, you're going to have to build by the draft. We talk about the free agency. It's fun. I doubt the Panthers are going to make too many big splashes just because that's not what bad teams do. And right now we're a bad team. They're going to be the quintessential Jerry jumping, cannonballing into the pool. I'm not making a big splash. I'm 5'7", 155, 160. Mm -hmm. I don't make a big splash when I cannonball into the pool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the the goal here, I believe, this offseason is going to be add some quality depth, add some some guys who are... Protect Bryce. Add some guys that you're going to be able to evaluate other guys (laughs) that you have. And then hopefully re-sign Burns and give him you know, that extension to clear the cap, re-sign Luvu just because you should. He's a good player. And then the rest, you know, is just going to come through the draft, I think. So I th- I still think that we could be a trade or two. Uh, a trade or two could happen with the Panthers before the draft just to continue to gather some extra ammunition, Sha- some extra picks. I haven't heard much about Shaq Thompson. I mean, he's 29 years old. I mean, I think yeah. he's like like nine million this year. Like, do yeah. you let him ride it what, out, or do you restructure, or do you? Is there any him? reason to cut him? What's the? Um, I believe it's like a post June. You save five million. Yeah, I mean, I could see that. Unfortunately, I love Shaq Thompson, but he's certainly not the player he used to be. You, you've got uh, Derek Brown, who you're you're gonna have to re-sign at some point. I, I think you good need to resign here. him this off season too. Yeah. Or because I have a feeling he's just gonna be worth way more if you let him play out that this year. Yeah. I mean, right now Moten is counting like almost twelve percent of the cap. Like they're definitely gonna restructure but, yeah. his deal. So that's probably gonna come down at least by half, I would imagine. Um, uh, according Burns to, is at ten percent. Go ahead. I was gonna say according to Spot Rack, I think they save like nine ten million when they restructure him so yeah exactly and so they got to do that um what does he have left on his deal so a couple of years Uh, i'm pulling it left after his deal yeah so maybe you even i don't know if you could extend him now i'd be happy to extend him another couple of seasons out and just spread that money out even further but yeah, I mean, he's got this year and next year, and then he's a free yeah. agent. So if you extend him to a two-year extension, kick it out. I mean, yeah. that's still like almost 34 years old at the end of that. So, I mean, he as a tackle, I feel like he could still – he's still playing yeah. at a high level. He's – right. He's still – again, this is not a, an all-pro that we're talking about here, but he is a solid player who causes us really no problems. Yeah. So <laughs> I, like, I like Taylor Moten. And for the Panthers, that's about all you can ask for. So – all right, Jerry, I think that is going to do it. Yeah, I'm going to get chewed out when I go back downstairs. <laughs> yeah, we have people here. Texts. Come down when you're done so we can figure out what we're doing for dinner. <laughs> All right, jeez. All right. I know. <laughs> Families, it's like, God, can't right. we have our hobby? <laughs> yeah, leave me alone. How can football in March? <laughs> My wife, Sylvia, goes, what are you talking about? It's the off season and we suck. <laughs> Uh, yeah that's it <laughs> talking about how much we suck uh we want to thank everyone for listening if you like the show please let your friends know please follow us on twitter at meow makes podcast if you have any questions or comments you can email us at mailbag at meow makes podcast.com leave us a five-star review with a comment on apple podcast we'll read it on the show please like and subscribe on youtube uh you can guarantee that we'll be back sometime next week to talk about free agency there will be some signings there will be some cuts uh there'll be a lot of Things to talk about, I would assume. So we'll be back. And until then, everybody stay safe out there and keep pounding. Go Tar Heels.